What's up, n e r s h a m Bestie? Welcome to Math Food Camp with Mr. Chang. It's me. In this video, we're gonna focus on comparing and ordering rational number. Let's get started. When it comes down to these kind of question, either they asking you to rearrange all the numbers from the least to the great, or the greatest to the smallest, or they ask you which number is the biggest or the smallest. The easiest way to do this question is convert all of them to decimal. So let's convert them together, right? So we have the first one, five over eight. What do we need to do with this? So all we know is five over eight is just five divided by eight on a calculator. We'll find out that this is 0.625. What is our next one? It's 0.62, right? So it's already the decimal. We don't want, need to convert them. So we just copy that. So the next one, we have three over four. Let's see, three divided by four is equal to 0.75. The next one is a decimal already. So we just need to copy those numbers six two four. The next one is two over seven. Two divided by seven is equal to zero point two eight five seven one. We can start skipping those after the thousands unit. And then the next one we have zero point three. And the last one we have three over eight. So what is three over eight? Let's see. Three divided by eight is equal to zero point three seven five. So now we're done converting all this number, right? So let's make sure we know that the question want us to line it up from the greatest to the least. All right, let's make sure we follow those steps. So now, how do we do that? We do that by comparing each one of this unit from the left to the right to see how they lined up. Are they the largest or the smallest? Unit by unit. So let's look at the first number right here. They all the unit number. They all zero. So they are all the same. Nothing we can compare. So let's look at the next unit. So we got some sixes here, a seven here. So we know the seventh one is the largest, right? So now we can copy that to our greatest to the least line to help help us set it up. So that will be the largest. So we can cross that out. So let's go back to it again, right? We got the sixes. So since they are the same, what we need to do? We need to look at the next unit, right? The hundreds unit. Let's see how they compare. Oh, they are all twos again. So it means they're still the same. So what do we need to do? We keep going further down to the right, the thousands unit. Let's compare them. We got a five. We got a nothing. We got a four. So we knew that you know the lineup will be the five will be the largest, the four will be next, and the one have nothing zero will be the smallest within all those numbers, right? So let's copy those. So we have zero point six two five, and then zero point six two four, and then we have zero point six two. Now all these numbers are compared. So now once we're done with all the sixes on the tenth unit, let's compare the rest, right? Let's go back to the list. On the tenth unit, we have two, and we have two threes. So we know that the three is bigger than two. So we focus on this two number. What is their hundred unit? One have nothing, the other have seven. So we know that the seven one is bigger than the one have nothing, right? So now we can copy those number to the list. So we got zero point three seven five, and then it will be zero point three. We can cross those two out, and the last one, right? The last one, all we have left is zero point two eight five seven. Boom! Now we are done, right? We compare all those numbers and we line it up from the largest to the smallest. What is the last step? We need to convert some of these number back to the fraction so we can compare the answer key, right? So let's look at this. Zero point seven five is come from three over four. Zero point six two five is come from five over eight. Zero point six two four is the same. Zero point six two is the same. They are not come from any fraction. Zero point three seven five is come from three over eight. Zero point three is a fraction. Nothing need to change. And the last one is come from two over seven. So when you compare your answer key, you are looking at this line, right? You need to start from three over four, then five over eight, then zero point six two four, then zero point six two, then three over eight, then zero point three. And then the last will be two over seven, and that's it. Just like that, super easy. All you need is type in your calculator real fast to convert all the fraction or any number you need back to decimal numbers, and then you start comparing unit to unit to unit. All right. So let's try another one. So the next one we have. Oh, we have some negative number, right? We have negative one point three, negative five over four, and so on and so forth. So let's convert all of them to decimal first. All right, Mr. Chang already do some behind the scene magic to convert all the necessary fraction to decimal, and I lined it up from top to bottom, right? So now let's look at what the question one, right? The question one us to arrange them from ascending order. What does that mean? Ascending order. We mean we're climbing up, right? What What does that mean? Is 
we want to line them up from the smallest to the largest. So let's compare all of them, right? So what is the cool thing about negative number? The negative number, the bigger the unit are, they are the smallest, right? So that's what the cool thing about all these negative number. The bigger unit they are, they are the smallest. If you need help, you can use the number line to help you out, right? Use the number line, right? We got zero and one right here as positive. And then when you think about this, right? The way the number line go is negative one, then negative two. It means that this right here, the bigger the number on the negative side, they are the smallest number, right? So if you need help with that concept, always draw the number line. So let's compare all these numbers, right? From the first unit. First unit, we have some ones here. So we know these are the smaller number. So let's look at the 10th the unit. The 10th unit here, we got some, a three, a two, a one, and a two. So we know that the smallest number here will be the one have the larger number on the 10th unit, right? So we know that the smallest here is minus 1.3. Okay, so this is done. So let's continue to compare, right? We got two twos here. Let's look at the 100th unit. One number have a five, one number have nothing. So we know that the one have a five is the smaller one. So let's write that down, 1.25. And then we have negative 1.2, okay? So now we have left just negative 1.1, all right? So all the numbers have the unit on the unit area is all compared. So now let's compare the one that have zeros, right? So on the 10th unit, one is six, one is seven, and one is eight. These are still negative number, right? What does that mean? It means that the bigger they are, the smallest they are. So we know that the eight is a little bit bigger, so we will copy that down. And then we'll go to the seven, negative 0 0.7. And then the last one, we have negative 0 0.6667. Okay, so it means in this question, the smallest number we have is negative 1.3, and the largest number we have is negative 0 0.6667. That's not it, right? We still have the last step. We need to convert all these numbers if necessary, back to fraction so we can compare the answer key. So let's look at this. Negative 1.3, nothing need to change. Negative 1.25, that is equal to negative five over four. And then negative 1.2 is equal to negative six over five. Negative 1.1 doesn't need to change. Negative 0 0.8 is equal to negative four over five. And then negative 0 0.7, not, nothing need to change. And the last one is, negative two over three. So that's how you compare, right? If you want to compare the answer key on the ascending order, the, the list will go from negative 1.3 to negative five over four, then negative five over six, and then negative 1.1, and then negative four over five, and then negative 0 0.7, and the last one is negative two over three. Super easy. Here's our next question. Oh, look at this. We introducing something we haven't talked about before, right? Percentages, we need to know how to change percentages, right? So how do we change percentages? So there's two ways. One is divided, percentage divided by 100 is equal to decimal. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Or the other way, you can remember this mnemonic, D2P. What does that mean? If you want to change a decimal, like 0 0.835, to percentages, you move the decimal two times, to the right. So if you move the decimal two times to the right, this number will be convert to 38.5, and now it's in percentage. The same thing apply. If you have, let's say 74.566%, all right? If we want to move the percentage back to decimal, we move the decimals two times to the left. So in this case, two times to the left, we'll move here. This will equal to 0 0.74566 if you convert to decimal. So hopefully this will help you know, on the harmonic side or how to remember how to change a percentage back to decimal or decimal back to a percentage. Since we got this cover, let me convert all these numbers to decimal so we can compare them. Now, Mr. Chung have to do some behind the scene magic again to convert all of them to decimal as it lined up right here. So now this time the question one from the least to the largest. So th what they want is what? From the smallest to the greatest. Since we got some negative number over here, we know that we need to put those on the list first, right? We need to compare all those first. So let's look at just the negative number. We have all of them a zero and a unit, so we're good there. So let's look at it again, right? We have a seven, 
We have a zero. We have a seven. Remember what we talked about before? All the negative number, the bigger the number are, the smallest they are. Let's compare the one that is seventh on the tenth unit, right? Let's look at the hundredth. One have nothing. The other one have three. So we know that this number is smaller than this one. So let's copy that to the list. So the first one we have is negative zero point seven three three three, and then the next one we have is negative zero point seven. So let's cross that out. And then all we have left is one negative number. We need to put compare, right? So we can copy that negative zero point zero four next. So now we cover all the negative number, right? All we have left is what? Compare the positive number. So let's look at this. The positive number, okay, on the unit area, they all zero, so we good there. So the next one, we have nine, zero, eight, and three. So we know that the one on the positive side, the smaller the number are, the smallest, right? So this one we got zero on the tenth unit, so we know that is the smallest. So we can copy that zero one zero three five. And then the next one we have what? The three here on the tenth unit, so we know that that is next. So zero point three three, and then we got. A、uh, eight right here, so we know that that's next. So zero point eight, and the last one is zero point nine. Well, we compare all this number, right? So again, the last step, convert all of them back to fraction or the original number, so we can compare it on the list. So let's do that. So the first one we have negative eleven over fifteen. The next one is negative seven over ten, and then the next one we don't have to change. And then the next one is three point five percent. And then next one we don't have to change. And the next one is four over five. And the last one we don't have to change. So when you compare to the answer key, this is what we compare to, right? So we start with negative eleven over fifteen, and then it would be negative seven over ten, and then it would be negative zero point zero four, and then three point five percent, and then it would be zero point three three, and then it would be four over five, and the last one is zero point. Nine practice make perfect, right? So let's try another one, and this time Mr. Chang is gonna help you less. You can pause the video right now to see how you do and how fast you can do it, and I'll show the answer in a little bit. All right, we're back. If you have convert all these numbers to decimal, you should see the following. The first one, one hundred thirty-three percent is equal to one point three three. The next one, we don't have to change, maintains negative one point two. The next one, negative four over three is equal to negative one point three 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 indefinite. Next one, one point three, we don't have to change. Eleven percent is equal to zero point one one. Next one, eight over nine is equal to zero point eight 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 eight. Continue, so we round it up to the nine. And then the last one, we have negative zero point eight. All right, super easy, right? And this time, what the question want? The question want us to arrange from the largest to the smallest. So let's write that down, right? Largest to the smallest. Since we saw the question where、right? there's some positive number and negative number, and we know the largest one is the positive number, right? So let's compare all those numbers first. So look at the positive number. We got a one, a one, a zero, and a zero. So on the unit side, we know that the one is what we need to compare first. So let's look at the, on the tenth unit. It's a three and a three, so they both three. So we know that we need to continue to compare, right? So the hundred unit, we got one three and we got a nothing, right? So we know that the one that have three is larger. So let's copy that. We got one point three three first, and then the next one will be one point three, and then now we still have two more number that is positive. We need to compare, right? So let's look at them. So the first number there is zero, so we're good. The next number on the tenth unit. One is a one, one is a eight, so we know that the eighth one is bigger. So let's copy them. Zero point eight 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 nine, and then the next one will be zero point one one, right? So now all the positive number is already compared. So let's compare the negative number. What we talked about before on negative number, the smaller the number are, they are the larger, right? So let's look at the let's look at them on the unit area. So there's a one here, a one here, and a zero here. The zero one is smaller, right? So we know that that is a larger number on the negative side. So we can copy that one. Negative zero point eight, right? We got two more number left. So let's look at them. There's a two and there's the three. So we know that this unit right here is smaller, right? Since it's a two, so we know that that number is a little bit bigger. So negative one point two, and the last one is negative one point three three three. So now we lined up all the number in the decimal form. Let's convert them back to regular numbers, right? 
So the first one, 1.33 is equal to 133%. And then we have 1.3 doesn't change. 0.8889 is equal to 8 over 9. And then 1.11 equal to 11%. Negative 0.8 doesn't change. And then 1.2 doesn't change. And then the last one is come from negative 4 over 3. And that's what we want to compare with your answer, okay? So last practice we have here. In this question, they are all fraction number, right? We still want to convert them all to decimal because that would be the easiest and quickest way for you to get the correct answer. So let's convert them all to decimal form. So Mr. Chang already converted them all of them to decimal form. So you should have this as the following. 11 over 9 is equal to 1.2222. The next one, 13 over 3 is equal to 4.3333. The next one is 4 over 6 is equal to 0 0.66667. We round it up. And then the next one is 17 over 15 is equal to 1.1333. Next one is 17 over 10 is equal to 1.7. And the last one is 33 over 2 is equal to 16.5. So now we can line those number based on what the question one, right? The question one from the smallest to the largest. So let's right copy that, make sure we didn't mess up. So let's compare them to see which one is smallest. Let's look at them. So let's see, we on the unit area, since all these number are positive, let's look at them. Oh, we got a zero on the unit area. So we know that that number is the smallest. So 0 0.66667, okay? So let's look at the rest, right? We got one, a, a one here, a one here, a one here. So we know that we look, need to look at the 10th unit. So on the 10th unit, let's compare them, right? So there's a two and there's a one and there's a seven. So we know that the one, the one with the number one is the smallest. So 1.1333. 1 and then the next one will be the two, right? 1.2222. And then the next one will be 1.7. And then we only have two number left. We got a four on the unit area and then a 16 on the unit area. Simple, right? 4.333 obviously is smaller than 16.5. All right, and the last step, we just need to convert all of them back to a fraction. Then we can compare it to the answer key. So let's convert all of them. So the first one we have is four over six. And then the next one we have 17 over 15. And then the next one we have is 11 over nine. And then the next one is 17 over 10. And then the next one is 13 over three. And the last one is 33 over two. And just like that, we're done, right? It's super quick and super easy. All we need to do is convert every single number to decimal and then compare them unit to unit. And just don't forget your negative number rule. One negative number, the bigger the number they are on a unit, the smallest they are. Those are the only exception rules you need to remember. If you need help on those number, draw a number line, right? You know that just one, two, and negative one and negative two over there, there to help you understand, oh, on the negative side, the bigger the number are, the smaller they are. So if you know you got a little trouble on that, always draw the number line to help you out. And that's everything you need to know when it comes to compare and order rational number. And as always, if you have any question, make sure to leave it down below. We love answering your question. And head over to nursechangstore.com where there's a tons of additional resources to help you feel more confident with your ATID exam. And as always, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.